China has made a major breakthrough in another technology, which is the target material. I know that there are very few people who pay attention to target materials, and this video may not have a high number of views, but I want to tell you through this video that many technologies in China are breaking through the limits. Even if it is as difficult as a chip, there are single point breakthroughs. For example, the target breakthrough we are going to talk about today was once the grief of China's high tech. Take indium tin oxide ITO targets as an example. In 2018, the Ministry of Science and Technology of China listed ITO targets as 35 technologies that urgently need breakthroughs in China. In this list, there are also lithography machines and chips. Maybe you may have only heard of lithography machines and chips, but not what the target material is. In fact, this technology has trapped China for 20 years. Target materials are widely used, and they are all in high-tech fields, such as chips, photovoltaics, screens and so on. In fact, the target material is one of the challenges that China must overcome to achieve chip localization. Besides, we all know China has an absolute advantage in photovoltaic technology. However, high-end photovoltaic target materials are indeed one of the few technologies in China that need to rely on imports. The same is true for screens such as LCD and OLED. In 2021, China's ITO target materials accounted for about 48% of the local supply, but it is basically in the low-end field, and the high-end field basically relies on imports. The target material is the basic material of high technology, that is to say, once the supply of the target material is cut off, many technologies in China will become rootless. For example, in 2021, when Chinese PV was in the critical moment of expanding production, Japanese companies gave priority to supply targets to companies in other countries, which not only led to Chinese companies facing target materials shortage and price increase of about 20%, but also put the PV industry in capacity dilemma. However, such important materials have been in the hands of companies such as Japan and the United States for 20 years, and have always been highly blocked from China which has greatly restricted the development of related upstream and downstream companies in China. Today, this technology has finally been achieved by Chinese scientists. In 2020, He Jilin, a professor of Chinese Academy of Engineering, led a team to successfully develop the key technology for the preparation of high-performance ITO sputtering targets, achieving a breakthrough from zero to one for high-end ITO targets. In the same year, the team of Professor Liu Qing of Chongqing University developed an ultra-high purity metal target project, which made high-end targets available for Chinese chips. At that time, the Chinese media described this technology as a single-point chip breakthrough. So, here comes the question, what exactly is the target material, and why can it restrict China's development in the past 20 years? What is the significance of its breakthrough? That and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. Let's get started. Target materials, as the name suggests, it is the target in the material, and it looks like this. Does it look like a target in our shooting competition? In fact, their functions are quite similar. The target in the game is used as the aim of the gun or bow and arrow, and the target material is also used as the target, but it is used as the target of the ion beam. When the ion beam hits the target, the atoms on the target are knocked out, and then the atoms can gather on the object, forming a very thin film on the surface of the object. Because this layer of film is made of metal and ions, its biggest function is to conduct electricity. For example, the glass used for the screen is originally non-conductive, but after being covered with this layer of film, it has the function of conducting electricity, as well as the circuit of the chip, and the substrate of the photovoltaic. Sound easy? In fact, its raw materials are also very common. Generally, it can be divided into three types, metal target, oxide target and alloy target. These raw materials are not unusual. What is unusual is that their requirements must be very thin and of high purity without impurities. For example, chip targets in the chip field are generally required to reach the 5N level, which is 99.999%. By contrast, common metals on the market are generally only 95% to 97%. Therefore, this kind of target must be prepared in a vacuum without a single particle of dust. After 1980, electronic industries such as chips, storage, LCD displays, 
and capacitors began to develop rapidly, and materials such as sputtering targets gradually emerged. Due to the high-tech threshold, for companies in the United States and Japan accounted for half of the market, among which Nippon Mining Metal and Toso accounted for more than half of the market, while Honeywell and Praxair in the United States accounted for one-third. Even Europe, which is technologically advanced, can only buy from these few companies. In 1990, China also noticed target materials, but China was busy developing large-scale industries at that time, and did not have much energy to focus on it. This is because the target material is special and its market is very small. In 2000, there were only more than 50 target material manufacturers in the world, and the largest company had only a few hundred people. However, with the development of science and technology, the target material has become more and more important. Especially in 2000, China's production of liquid crystal displays and dot matrix displays has leapt to the first place in the world, but all ITO targets used for screens rely on imports. Without target materials, China will always be short of chips and screens. It is against this background that several scientific research institutes in China began to take it as task. Taking He Jilin as an example, he started to study target materials in the mid-1990s. At that time, in his opinion, the target was not a difficult task, and he could do it. He has strong expertise and status in the field of materials science, and is a leader in China's tantalum and niobium industry. Tantalum and niobium are relatively rare metals that can be used to manufacture large-scale industrial electronics, such as aerospace engines, defense weapons, and high-tech electronic devices, and are also indispensable metal materials for high-tech industries. In the past, this material was also a field restricted by foreign countries in China. Foreign countries do not sell technology and equipment, and even do not allow China to enter the finishing industry, which makes it very difficult for China to break through. However, Professor He relied on the refining equipment he designed and improved a number of processes, and finally conquered the preparation technology of tantalum and niobium. Dozens of tantalum and niobium products developed by him are exported overseas, and some products even rank first in the world. Tantalum and niobium metal targets are also the topic of Professor He. However, it looks very simple, but it actually requires a lot of technology and equipment. When Professor He actually did it, he found that it was not that simple. Because the technology can be applied to chips and screens, it is highly classified. The international technology blockade against China in all aspects not only imposes a strict embargo on equipment, but also strictly keeps the related technology and information strictly confidential. Target production and manufacturing is divided into four major links, namely metal purification, target manufacturing, sputter coating, and downstream product applications, and these four links are all very backward in China. The first is metal purification. The metals prepared by Japanese companies can reach the level of 5N or even 6N, 99.9999%, while China can only rely on imports for a long time and has no ultra-high purity materials. This also affects the second link, the manufacture of the target. Even pure metal is not enough, because target manufacturing involves technologies such as precision machining and special treatment, and requires special instruments and equipment, which were not available in China at that time. And even if there were, there was no downstream industry in China at that time, because sputtering machines were monopolized by American and Japanese multinational groups for a long time. This was the environment in which China studied targets at that time. So Professor He went back to the original road of tantalum and niobium products. Without equipment, he made it himself. Without technology, he improved it by himself and slowly accumulate technology and experience hoping to achieve a breakthrough from zero to one. Chinese target research, represented by Professor He, started in this way. They did not have strong policy support, but only relied on their own persistence and so-called long-term vision. But it is also their persistence that has accumulated a number of key technologies and potential enterprises for China. Of course, a science and technology industry is not enough to rely solely on scientific research units, but also needs the cooperation of policies and industries. By 2005, two major events had occurred in China's target material industry. The first thing is that China has introduced a target material policy, 
which brings together many domestic research institutions and enterprises to jointly tackle the key technologies of target materials. It was also in this year that China officially started large-scale research on target materials, 40 years later than foreign countries. At this time, the previous accumulation of Chinese scientific research institutions came in handy. The second thing is the establishment of Kung-Fu Materials International Company, Limited, the leader in target materials in China. Kung-Fu Materials is an important company in the field of target materials. Its founder is Yao Li Jun. He has been engaged in research in the chip field for a long time and was once the Greater China President of the Materials Department of Honeywell, but he has always been concerned about the Chinese target industry. When he found that domestic attention to target materials was not enough, and there were almost no companies specializing in this technology, in 2005, he persuaded a number of overseas doctors to give up their high-paying jobs and return to China to found Kung-Fu Materials. Because of mastering the core technology of target materials, Kung-Fu Materials developed China's first target material in the year of its establishment, breaking the long-term blockade of the United States and Japan, and Chinese companies finally used their own target materials. Kung-Fu Materials has therefore become a participant in the major policies of China's target materials. Of course, at this time, Chinese target materials are still relatively backward, and there are relatively few types. Moreover, the difficulty and application of different targets are also different, so although China has manufactured targets, they are actually just entry-level and can only be used for low-end production. Take Kung-Fu Materials as an example. In 2008, the company's monthly sales revenue was only 80,000 yuan at its lowest point, which was not as high as the salary of these PhDs overseas. Even at the time of rapid development, Kung-Fu Materials relied on government guarantees to build factories with bank loans. So, Kung-Fu Materials is the epitome of China's target industry, but there is no way to avoid this. If China wants to make a breakthrough, it must bear the pain. In Yao Li Jun's words, I hope that the target technology will come from abroad, and then go from home to the world. Since 2006, Chinese target companies have started an upsurge of independent research and development. In 2014, Kung-Fu Materials developed low-oxygen ultra-high-purity titanium, which ended China's history of relying on imported titanium powder. Before and after this, Kung-Fu Materials has also completed the related technologies of aluminum and copper targets. In 2016, Kung-Fu Materials built the ultra-high-purity aluminum and copper industry chain, and it also became the first company in the United States, Japan, and foreign countries to master the complete industry chain from raw material preparation to sputtering targets. The strong rise of China's target industry made Japanese and American companies feel threatened, so they were forced to actively reduce prices to compete for industrial advantages. Take 2010 as an example. At that time, the import price of ITO targets per kilogram was as high as 8,000 yuan. Later, the price dropped to more than 2,000 yuan, a drop of 75%. This also verifies that, if you make a breakthrough, others will lower their prices. In fact, this is also the usual method of developed countries, which is to use monopoly to make profits. Once your technology breaks through, they will use price cuts, use low-priced products to hit your research motivation and then continue to sell at high prices. However, the target industry is related to China's key technological breakthroughs. Naturally, China will not give up easily, but instead turn to higher performance targets. In 2015, Professor His team once again challenged large-size ITO targets. ITO targets have restricted China's technological development for many years, and even upstream raw materials cannot be spared. The ITO target is also called indium tin oxide, and one of the most important raw materials is indium, which has very little reserves in the world and is more precious than gold. However, 72.7% of the reserves are in China, so China is the largest exporter of indium resources. However, because the preparation technologies such as indium oxide can only be produced by the United States and Japan, China's indium cannot be sold at a high price and can only be sold as ordinary mineral resources. Doesn't China sell it? The answer is yes. However, since it is a very important material for making screen conductive films, China cannot interfere too much, otherwise China's screen and other industries will be greatly affected. 
Therefore, in order to grasp the pricing power of Indian resources, China must overcome the technology of large size targets. Now, Professor He is no longer alone, and China has introduced a number of policies on the target. In addition, China's target material preparation and downstream industries have gradually improved, and mass production can be achieved as long as there is technology. By the way, the establishment of an autonomous system is his greatest contribution. It should be explained here that the target material is synchronized with the development of the chip, and the chip is updated very quickly, so is the target material. Often when China conquers a target of a certain size or purity, American and Japanese companies will upgrade to a higher level or rely on monopoly to set up barriers. Take technical barriers as an example. New target companies generally develop from low-end technology to high-end, because some low-end technologies do not require such strict targets. However, after monopolizing the core technology, the target manufacturers in the United States and Japan deliberately put forward very strict industry standards and patent licensing measures. Strict standards will increase the difficulty of survival for new entrants. Then they will tell you with the patent that you don't need to develop the technology yourself, we can authorize you to produce it, as long as you pay for it. There is no problem with this method at ordinary times, but if you are not authorized at a critical moment, you will be finished. So Professor His ITO target independent system is very important. With it, as long as China continues to develop according to this system, sooner or later it will be able to break through more advanced targets and more advanced chips. Well, thanks for your listening. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.